Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. I wanted to do a look with the new Tiny Marvels palette that's a collab between Mel Thompson and Sydney Grace. This is something I didn't know about. I didn't expect when it was announced last week. I lost my mind. I was like, what? One of my favorite YouTubers collabing with my favorite eyeshadow brand. And I know they do more than eyeshadows, but their eyeshadows are my favorite. And I was like, I, I just spent over like $150 during their Christmas and July sale, and now I need something else. I feel like it's been the summer of Sydney Grace. And if you look at the palette, isn't this just gorgeous? I love that we have so many pressed pigments in here, and with the exception of this shade here, which is in the palette is called Scarab, but it's Red Chameleon, every other shade is new. It's not already in the existing Sydney Grace lineup. I love that there are so many mattes in here. And it looks like we have one metallic shade and five pressed pigments. I think the, the color story was a little intimidating to me when I first saw it, um, but then I started looking at it in quads. So if you, just this right here, would do a really beautiful look. These guys here would work beautifully together. These guys here work really well. These of course work really well. And then I started thinking, what if I went this way? Well, that would work, or even this way. And that's what I love about a well thought out palette is that you can divide it up into smaller groups and it works really well. Also, if you wanted to, like these six colors here would work really well. These six colors here would work really well. I love that this is one of those palettes where if it, and I have to find a way to break it up for myself because too many shades overwhelm me and then I'm like, what do I do? I don't know. I feel like when there's as many shades as this, knowing that I can actually break it up into groups, quads or five or six shadows together, it makes it a little bit easier for me to handle. Now I'm probably not gonna use like a, like just a specific quad. I'm probably just gonna pick and choose whatever looks pretty to me from the palette. But I did wanna let you know, if you ever have a palette that feels overwhelming, you know, if you've got more than 12 shades in there and you're like, what do I do? Think about how can you break it up? And they're usually grouped together so those looks will work well. So I'm going to start with this shade right here. This one is called Tree Hopper. I'm gonna grab a big fluffy brush and I'm just gonna put this right in my crease. Boy, I've been playing with nothing but Sydney Gray shadows for the last probably three and a half weeks. And I'll tell you, so, so impressed. I like how this shade kind of walks the line between um, a very light tan brown and it has a little bit of warmth to it, a little bit of a mustard undertone, but not too much. The reason I love Sydney Gray shadows is I remember last summer, I think it was end of June, maybe beginning of July, she did a series of um, videos on Sydney Grace for their upcoming Christmas and July sale. And she demoed their Mountain Trail bundle and their Raspberry Kiss bundle. And I was like, I need these in my life. And she talked so highly about them. It convinced me to try them. And I'll tell you, they have been my favorite shadows, my favorite formula since I got introduced to them last July. I love that Mel introduced me to these and I, I was jumping for joy, like a little kid when I realized she was collabing with Sydney Grace. So, oh, I love the mattes. Great, okay, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna use this shade down here, this is Death Moth. I'm gonna take um, just a smaller brush, not as large or as fluffy as the last one, and I'm just going to pat this right here in the outside. This is one of those things that I, I always end up uh, kind of intensifying the outer corner just a little bit. I tend to like the way this looks. I also take it up a little bit towards the corner edge of my eyebrow. And I've been wearing a lot more eyeshadow recently. I think that having things that I really enjoy using and that I'm trying for the first time, shades I'm trying for the first time, it really kind of inspires me to wear eye makeup. I haven't been wearing a ton of makeup during the first several months of quarantine. And then I would say end of June, July, and August, I definitely have been wearing more. And new products from my favorite brand always inspire me. So I'm gonna be wearing a lot of eyeshadow with this palette as well as the other ones that I picked up. I'm gonna use this green shade here. This is Mantis. It's a really 
beautiful, almost like a neon mint. Oh, look at that. So pretty. I'm just going to pack this on the lid. I've always been impressed with the pigmentation of the shadows from Sydney Grace. Boy, I normally would not wear green like this, but I like it. I like it. I think it's fun. I'm going to pick up the shade Fire Butts right here, and I'm going to place this kind of on the very inside edge of my lid. I'm going to go back into that first shade called Tree Hopper and use that right on my lower lash line and then intensify it with some of Night Moth, that second darker brown shade. Part of me wants to keep putting on more eyeshadow and the other part of me says stop, stop right there. You've never done a look that's like this because the only place I have anything that's shimmery or metallic is right here in my inner tear duct area, inner corner and the beginning of my lower lash line. The rest of it is matte. I usually spread a shimmer all over the lid and this is a really different look and I would love to see what it looks like with mascara. So I'm debating, do I do anything else? I think I'm gonna leave it here. I really like this look. I love having this bright green all over the lid. I like keeping the metallic just to the inner portion of the eye and the rest of it being matte. So the one thing that I did change was I used this little tiny number eight Wayne Goss brush and I dipped it here into Spider, which is the darkest shade in the palette. And I shoved that right into my lash line. I used a gel pencil in the upper waterline. And then this, I just grabbed some of this and shoved it right down into the roots of my lashes. Uh, mostly on the outer three quarters. I don't have any towards the inner, but I love darkening my lash line that way. And I feel like it gives it a really nice kind of pretty look without being too precise for a liner on the upper lash line. I want to see, I know these are going to swatch beautifully. You probably can find really great swatches like all over the place, but let me swatch some for you. This first shade here is called Web. Look at that. This is Tree Hopper. This is the first shade I put on. This right here is Fire Butts. Wow. This is Walking Stick. And this is Scarab. Look at those. Those make a really pretty eye look. This right here is Flutterby. This is BB. Wow. And this is Mantis. Here is Meadowhawk, and this is Lovebug. This is Jewel Bee. This one, it's gonna need like a second pass. There we go. Jewel Bee, this is Marvel, and this one here is Death Moth. <laughs> These are getting out of control. I'm gonna go to the other arm. There's only two shades left. This is Bugaboo. And this one here is Spider. So we mix this one in a bit with this, but look at how vibrant these are. Aren't they just beautiful? The only shadow that I needed to get a second swatch of was the lavender shade called Jewel Bee. And it could be that I didn't pick enough up on my finger the first time, because normally these guys are pretty pigmented and yeah, I think I didn't get enough. Cause like that with one swatch back and forth, it's it's pretty obviously a great, a bright, vibrant lavender. So I'm absolutely in love with this palette. I even think the artwork is really cool and that it's inspired by Mel's tattoos and was drawn up by her tattoo artist. But I feel like the color story in here is great. And even though I might have like a shade like this, maybe even a shade similar to this, I don't have this kind of pastel -y lavender shade. And then to have them all in the same palette, I don't have another palette that has a similar color story. And I feel like it's really easy to work with. And if you're wanting to do something, you know, a little bit cooler, you can like work in this area over here. If you're wanting to do something warmer, you can work, you know, like in through here with this. And I feel like it's really versatile. And I, at first was like, what do I do with this? When I first saw what the layout looked like. And then when I started seeing people use it, the PR samples that got sent out, I was like, yes, so easy to do. So I love, love, love 
there was a bit of a snafu. My credit card got charged three times for this palette. I wasn't the only person. There were several people mentioned that they got charged more than once. Somebody said they got charged up to seven times, and I was like, man. Uh, Mel has a code, and that would bring it down, I think, to $47 instead of being 52, but even getting charged $47 seven times, that would be hard. Now, Sydney Grace was like, this has never happened, we're so sorry. Chase, who charges credit cards for them, it was a problem in their software, so they were able to refund the money. They went through everything with a fine tooth comb, and the way they resolved it was by offering $20. I got a, by the way, thank you so much for letting us know you were charged multiple times, we refunded the extra charges, and we're putting $20 in your online account for the next time you make a purchase with us. And for me, truthfully, I really appreciate it, but I would still pay full price for their stuff because it's that good. Now, I don't wanna diminish what they're trying to do to build trust with their customers and to apologize, but I almost kind of feel bad using the $20 <laughs> because they're an indie company, they're, they're, doing, they're doing their best. And sometimes things like this happen and it's hard to have those types of growing pains when you're collabing with somebody and it's a exciting new release. But I think they handled it well uh, with a lot of grace. And I hope that people who had that problem also realize that it, it wasn't on Sydney Grace's part. They didn't carelessly charge people multiple times. It was, you know, on behalf of the organization charging credit cards for them. So there you go. I love this palette. I'm, and I know I'm gonna use it a ton. Make sure to check out Mel's channel. I'm gonna link it in the description bar down below. Thank you for watching today. Thank you for being subscribed. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.